Does managing your health care feel like a full-time job? Bounced from one doctor to the next? All the forms, the bills, the not a bills, the... Press 4 to repeat these options. Does health care have to be this way? At Kaiser Permanente, all of us work together to make health care easier. And with integrated care and coverage, all you have to do is focus on your health. Learn more at kp.org, Kaiser Permanente, for all that is you. Kaiser Foundation Health Plan of the Mid-Atlantic States Incorporated, 2101 East Jefferson Street, Rockville, Maryland, 20852. I'm your host, Annie Bowles, and this is News Du Jour. We're back. I am so excited to be back behind the microphone. This whole past week, I felt like this isn't real life. Like this can't be happening. Is my show ever going to come back? Like it's just been very surreal. Um, I think this may have been the longest I have gone without podcasting in quite some time. So it was very strange. Anyway, I want to go ahead and apologize and explain what's been going on. So obviously you guys heard that we are switching to Sirius XM and their network. And so we've had to switch our hosting of this show. And there were a lot of bumps along the way with that migration from one hosting platform to the other. And I wasn't receiving certain emails and everything was getting lost. And it was very frustrating. But Somewhere midway through the week, I just decided to release it and stop like spinning my wheels and stressing out about it because it was truly something that was just out of my hands. My agency was handling all of the migration. So at the end of the day, there wasn't anything I could be doing to help speed things along. Me worrying and spinning my wheels wasn't going to be helping. So anyway, I didn't want to go into the holidays, the new year without catching you guys up and without like saying hi and bye real quick because we always take off the week between Christmas and New Year's partially because it's just a really, really slow news week with the Capitol shut down, the court system largely shut down. So it's always really quiet. And I thought this year, you know, I was going to do the same thing, but I felt bad leaving you guys hanging. So This is going to be an extra long episode to really catch you guys up on like basically a whole week's worth of news. And hopefully that way when we get into the new year, we can just pick right up where we left off and you guys will be fully caught up. Of course, if there's any breaking news that I think is really important for you guys to know about, I will be posting about that either to our Instagram stories or doing an Instagram, you know, sort of reels breakdown of a news story if it's a really big one. So be on the lookout for that. As you guys know, I am enrolled in a professional certificate program through NYU right now for journalism. So I'm going to be working hard on that program and like all of that learning while I'm taking a week off, quote unquote. And then also I'm going to be working on an ebook to do with social media. So we, I personally have a pretty a sizable social media platform on Instagram. That's my personal page. And so I get questions all the time about growing your social media. And so I thought I would create an ebook for anybody who's interested. So be on the lookout for that. That's what I'm going to be doing while I'm taking time off. But anywho, in case you're new here, and this is the first episode you're hearing, welcome to the news du jour. You may be wondering why am I, Annie Bowles, here hosting this podcast? I usually start by telling people that I am a political baby. You see, my parents met working on Capitol Hill. By the time I was two, I had been in my first political commercial and even gotten lost crawling around the West Wing. Don't worry, Al Gore found me. My family then moved abroad when I was nine and I attended an international school in Brussels with kids from all over the world. And it's this type of global perspective that I also bring to our show. I then graduated from American University in D.C. after spending or after studying, excuse me, political science and art history, as well as interning on both sides of Capitol Hill. 
I even interned down the hall from where my parents met. I am now pursuing a professional certificate in journalism at NYU in conjunction with Rolling Stone magazine. I guess I was always that friend in the group who cared deeply about not just what was going on politically, but also globally. I often kept my friends informed through high school and young adulthood, so I guess I've always done a version of this show. I am genuinely passionate about following the news, and I'm here to break it down for you every weekday. We strive to be a calmer space to consume the news, or as one listener put it, like getting your news from a well-informed bestie. I'm so glad you're here. So like I mentioned, the reason that this episode is going to be extra long is because we're catching you guys up on everything. So buckle up. And also, I want to let you guys know that there's certain stories that I wrote earlier in the week and then we got like an update later in the week. So it's a little, you know, choppier maybe than a usual episode. But let's just jump in. We have four mini stories right here at the top. The first mini story, the medical examiner ruled that drowning and the, quote, acute effects of ketamine, end quote, caused the Friends actor Matthew Perry's death. This is obviously heartbreaking on its face, but even more heartbreaking given that no one really knew he had relapsed. This ended an almost lifelong struggle with addiction for Matthew Perry, and all I hope is that he's at peace now. So I also wanted to let you guys know that the Congo has elections coming up. You know, the Democratic Republic of Congo that we've been talking about quite a bit on this show. We did, I think, an entire episode just on Congo and what's been going on there. So if you're interested in knowing more about that conflict, definitely scroll back into our feed and find that episode. I hope they're all still showing up for you guys. (laughs) Sorry, this migration has just been nutty. But I want to let you guys know that those elections are coming up because those may become relevant in the conflict. And if so, we will definitely deep dive on that. Then I also want to let you guys know that Tesla has recalled the autopilot software in 2 million vehicles. Reportedly, the government is advocating for more prompts for drivers to like pay attention and stay awake and things like that, even though the cars can technically drive themselves. So this is just a safety measure. Doesn't seem too serious, but it's really hard to tell with these things, in my opinion. For our last mini story, the Supreme Court has announced that they will hear an obstruction case connected to Donald Trump's January 6th charges. The decision won't come until June, though, but it could affect potentially some pre-existing convictions that are related to January 6th and like all the rioters. So definitely stay tuned on this. This is going to be an important one and something else to do with Trump is ending up before the Supreme Court. But don't worry, we'll get there. So for our first longer story today, we have so many stories, guys. It's just going to be a long episode. We have two high profile court decisions that I wanted to tell you guys about. So let's jump in. First off, Rudy Giuliani was ordered by a jury. (laughs) This jury was not fucking around with Rudy. They ordered him to pay one hundred and forty eight million dollars to you guessed it the poll workers that he admittedly defamed. I suspect that he was hoping that admitting to this crime would like lessen his sentencing potentially, but it did not seem to work that way given that these women were seeking 43 million, I believe, and they got 148. (laughs) That is insane. And this does not bode well for the other people who are involved with these efforts. And that includes former President Trump. Rudy Giuliani, though, outside the courthouse, told reporters, quote, I don't regret a damn thing, end quote, showing zero remorse for defaming these women. But the jury in this case seemed to feel differently. And then after this news came out, this is one of those like follow ups I wanted to tell you guys about. Giuliani filed for bankruptcy, according to The New York Times. This is in order to cover his enormous legal fees, unpaid taxes and oh, yeah. 
the $148 million that he now owes to these two women that he defamed. And probably more things. This is pretty much where we figured things were headed, but he currently has no source of income because he's barred from practicing law until other cases are concluded. So this is just a really messy situation for him because he was caught up in the president's web, but the president has this sort of like perpetual source of income, his fan base, and Giuliani just doesn't have that. And then next up, the second court case I wanted to tell you guys about, Prince Harry won his lawsuit against a prominent UK tabloid that, according to the court ruling, hacked his phone. This was a major victory for this branch of the royal family that has always alleged that the press took things way too far and way overstepped their bounds. And now that's been proven in court. It's rare that the royal family in Great Britain will actually take these things to court, but this case proved to be worth the legwork. For our next story today, a shift in the Catholic Church, truth and consequences. So Pope Francis allows for priests to bless same-sex relationships. Now, This isn't the radical shift that a lot of people would like to see, you know, changing the language surrounding marriage to include same-sex couples, but it is a step in the right direction. Priests are now able to bless same-sex couples the way that they would, you know, heterosexual couples. There have been also recent changes such as transgender people being eligible for baptism and to serve as godparents. So there's been progression in the space of LGBTQ roles in the church. And this is an establishment that doesn't change very often, you guys. It's really sad that it doesn't, you know, keep up with the current moment. But this is a big shift for an institution like the Catholic Church. Secondly, a cardinal who once wielded a lot of power in the church is being sentenced for financial crimes. This man was the Pope's chief of staff, his right-hand man, and now he's been tossed out. If you guys remember, the Vatican is its own country. It is not a city in Italy. It is a nation, and it has its own laws of governance. Pope Francis actually changed the laws in the Vatican, though, so that his cardinal could stand trial there. And experts for the New York Times actually couldn't find a similar historical situation as far back as the 16th century. So this is a really uncommon, very rare thing to be doing. This cardinal was convicted of embezzlement and fraud. He's planning to appeal, but he likely faces a prison sentence and a a, pretty substantial fine. It's nice to see some consequences, especially for those at the top of the food chain. And next up for today, the EU is looking at adding a new controversial member, Ukraine. Talk about coming into a new relationship with baggage. Ukraine is being looked into for membership in the EU during an active war. And according to the AP, these talks are actually being fast-tracked. Obviously, this would be a slap in the face to Putin, who is insisting through this violent war that Ukraine is actually a part of Russia. As a reminder, over 10,000 civilians have been killed by Russia since the start of this war, and that is according to the United Nations, as well as many other sources. And what this would mean for protecting further civilian harm is uncertain. Would this mean more funding in the fight against Russia? Probably. However, the EU is not a military alignment. That's really important to understanding. It's more of an economic alignment. NATO, which Ukraine would also like to join, is though. That is a military institution. So If they were allowed into NATO, they would get a lot more physical protection. But being part of the EU, again, opens economic doors to them, which allows more cash flow, which can allow them to better defend themselves. 
but hurdles still exist for UK Ukraine to become a member state, largely their corruption and mishandling of funds. That is a huge issue still in Ukraine. And those topics, you know, they're important. But with everything going on, EU members may choose to look past those things or propose expedited plans for installing change, something like that. Right now, though, Hungary seems to be the biggest hurdle, saying that Ukraine is just not ready to be considered. If you remember, they are a former, you know, Eastern Bloc nation, so it may be old rivalries or even one knowing too much about the other. Hungary is also the country that is most aligned with Putin in the EU, so they could stand to cause some issues or basically block this. But at the end of the day, Hungary actually chose to step aside and not vote on this subject, which allowed for Ukraine to begin the process. So that's progress. And we'll definitely keep you guys posted. Next up for today, a volcanic eruption in Iceland. So You guys have probably already heard a volcano in Iceland is finally erupting after a lot of warning signs. We definitely were covering all of those warning signs. So this is something we knew was coming. A nearby town of 4,000 residents had to be fully evacuated. But according to ABC News, officials in Iceland are warning about toxic fumes in the air as far away as Reykjavik, which is the capital where 140,000 people live. So they're hoping that this wind will change tonight to basically spare the city from these dangerous gases. We'll definitely keep you guys posted on that. But also there has been a much more severe incident in China. According to the BBC, an earthquake in China killed 120 people, making it the deadliest earthquake there in years. So there's a lot of climate related activity going on right now. There's other things, too, but these were some of the more serious ones. We'll keep you posted on both of these. And then I have to talk about, of course, Donald Trump being barred from being on the ballot in Colorado. So former President Donald Trump was legally disqualified from being on the 2024 Colorado ballot. The court there ruled that he was ineligible to hold public office because of his role in the January 6th insurrection. Trump has said immediately that he is appealing this. So it looks like this case will actually end up before the U.S. Supreme Court for their final say. So This is a situation where the Supreme Court of the United States could fully affect the 2024 presidential elections, literally who's on the ballot. And it's completely unprecedented, as is so much to do with former President Trump. I feel like that word just defines him. This case is one that is honestly pretty difficult to understand, though. I do believe it was judges that came to this conclusion. You know, I don't know exactly why and how this played out the way that it did. So I'm going to be diving deeper into this for you guys to break it down. But I wanted to ask if you guys would want to hear a legal expert come here and help us break this down to the nitty gritty in a bonus episode because we've done it in the past to do with Trump's legal cases because they get so confusing at times. And I really want to understand the meat of this and how this can happen so that when it ends up in front of the Supreme Court, we can all understand exactly what's going on. So let me know what you guys think about that. I think it may be the best course of action for understanding this very complex case. I'll keep you guys posted. And then I wanted to touch on the school shooting in the Czech Republic. So content warning, this story involves a school shooting. 14 people were killed and 20 more were wounded in a shooting at Charles University in Prague, Czech Republic. Reportedly, the gunman first shot his father before heading to the university to go on his killing spree. Imagery showed students hiding out on tiny ledges outside of their very tall buildings, hoping to avoid the gunmen. But local officials in Europe 
made it clear that this assailant got his inspiration from a, quote, similar terrible event abroad, end quote. Doesn't take much to connect those dots. So for the remainder of the episode today, we're going to be going over a wide variety of Israel and Gaza updates. Content warning, this story involves war. So keep in mind that I'm starting these updates from like a week ago. (laughs) This is when I first was writing episodes for you guys that I wasn't able to put out. Anywho, three hostages were mistakenly shot by Israeli forces. I did want to talk about this even though it happened a while ago now. This past Friday, not today, but last Friday, there were three Israeli hostages killed by mistake by IDF soldiers. Your first question, I'm sure, how could this happen? I mean, they're searching everywhere for these hostages. They've got to be top of mind for the IDF. So what happened? The thing is, killing Hamas and identifying Hamas's trickery is also top of mind for Israelis. You see, Hamas is known by both Israeli leadership and U.S. leadership to not play by the rules. They love to break the rules of war in both major and minor ways. They're known to deliberately hide themselves amongst civilians and even things like using recordings of crying babies to lure IDF forces towards bombs. So with things like that going on, IDF soldiers are just like really overly careful and you know, maybe nervous by anything that seems innocent (laughs) because that's where Hamas likes to play them. Hamas plays on the IDF's humanity, quite literally, and quite often. So when the IDF forces saw three young men in an alley waving a makeshift white flag, they thought this was a threat and they opened fire. And obviously, They were wrong. It was not a threat. It was three of their own who had survived 70 plus days in captivity at the hands of Hamas only to be gunned down by those who were there to save them. It is a bitter, tragic, heartbreaking scenario. No other way about it. This has obviously renewed calls for a ceasefire in order to get more hostages released and civilians out of harm's way and to renew the effort to take out Hamas more tactically. Lloyd Austin was also in Israel earlier this week when I wrote this. (laughs) They were there to basically try and pressure Netanyahu to wrap up the war by year end, which is like right now. As per Always, the U.S. also seems to be advocating that Israel use special forces to raid the hostages out and basically kill Hamas leadership. And to be honest, it's kind of hard to understand from the outside why they're not doing this. On top of everything else, there's also been a huge communication blackout in Gaza. I think this happened, you know, a little while ago now. It's been hard to keep up with these blackouts because they've been numerous. It's been very up and down. But this was the longest technological blackout of the war so far. So I just wanted to note that for you guys. And then according to the Telegraph, a ceasefire was rejected. An offer of a ceasefire was rejected by Hamas. The deal on the table, as reported by the Telegraph, was one week of ceasefire in exchange for 40 hostages. And Hamas was just looking for a much longer ceasefire. We'll let you guys know if they get that. And then the Red Sea. Let's touch on the Red Sea. There's a lot to talk about here, way more than I'm going to go over. I'm going to give you guys like two sentence summary, but we will double click on this later and dive into it because it is an alarming situation. Things are heating up further. The Houthis have publicly warned the U.S. not to attack them, threatening to attack the United States directly if they did, which, you know, I I don't think that's a fair match matchup right there. (laughs) The U.S. versus like a rebel group. But 
that's what they're saying publicly. So this is just not a good vibe to be setting. And if you guys are confused as to who the Houthis are, this is the conflict to do with Yemen. I think we also spent an entire episode going over Yemen and what's going on there. Definitely a big chunk of an episode, if not a full episode. So if you want the backstory on Yemen, definitely scroll back through our episodes and you can find it. And then the humanitarian crisis in Gaza is really widening, you guys. And I wanted to really touch on that. People are literally starving to death. And this is something that is so preventable. The UN and many nations across the globe are trying to send aid to Gaza. And whether it's being held up or what, I don't know and I don't understand. But I did see headlines that were saying that Gazans are raiding these UN trucks and things like that because they're so desperate and literally they'll raid a truck and then sit in the street and eat it immediately because they are that hungry, starving to that extent. So this is just a really dire situation and these are civilians. So we really, we all need to be taking this really seriously and keeping our eyes on it because this is not humane in any way, shape or form. And then according to Politico, the U.S. Security Council passed a resolution to boost aid to Gaza. Speak of the devil. Um, The original proposal included a ceasefire, but the U.S. vetoed the resolution numerous times in order to protect Israel's mission to eliminate Hamas. So the U.S. is interested in making sure Hamas gets taken out. However, They promised to abstain from voting on this if the language was basically toned down to not call for a ceasefire, but rather to just call for more aid into this embattled region. It passed with unanimous support, unsurprisingly. And again, the U.S. just sat out that vote. Meanwhile, the death toll in Gaza has surpassed 20 thousand you guys it is really hard to understand this number fully it's heartbreaking especially going into Christmas a family event where we're all going to be surrounded by our loved ones for the most part of you know the vast majority of people will be with their loved ones and this is an event that originally took place in Bethlehem not too far from Gaza itself so It's just a hard time. It's a very, you know, bittersweet time. And going into this holiday, I just wanted to say, you know, a moment of silence for all of the civilians who are trapped, as well as the hostages who are trapped and anybody who's in harm's way who is a civilian. They don't belong there in harm's way and they deserve every sense of peace and sense of security that we have here in the U.S. So I wanted to give a moment of silence for anybody who is trapped in this conflict. Thank you guys for sticking with me this week. I can't say how much I appreciate you. I already have a giveaway planned for you guys. So if you're interested in entering a giveaway for some merch, head to our Instagram. Make sure you're following us and we will post the details on there right after Christmas. Just a little thank you from me to you to, you know, just say how much I appreciate your support through this hosting migration this transition to Sirius it is a milestone for our show and I want to celebrate that but more so I want to celebrate you guys hanging in there through this crazy week and that is the news du jour today I wanted to leave you guys with the quote peace cannot be kept by force it can only be achieved through understanding If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever podcast platform you use to listen. A rate and review on that platform or a shout out on social media would mean the world to us and help us to be able to keep creating the news du jour and reach more people who need a calmer space to consume the news. But the best way to support all of our work is to become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash sugar free media and that is also linked in our show notes you can follow us on social media at news du jour dot podcast on both instagram and tiktok 
You can follow my personal account at It's Annie Bowles on both platforms as well. Any little noises you may hear in the background are my rescue pup. He has a little separation anxiety and always records with me. We appreciate you listening and look forward to telling you about the news again next time on News Du Jour. Broadcasting from... Oh. Oh.